Bibi Netanyahu's speech in Congress broke the all-time record for the most standing ovations. We've got some key takeaways. Yesterday, Bibi Netanyahu, as we have discussed a number of times today, addressed a joint session of Congress with a number of important American representatives not there, such as the President of the United States, the Vice President of the United States, the former Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, the Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, and so on, not to mention a number of prominent Democrats who didn't show up. But having said that, it was an incredibly moving speech. It set the record for the most standing ovations ever given by a House of Congress. And it was 55 standing ovations in total. And that's pretty astounding. It was every minute and a half, and they were standing on their feet, Republicans and Democrats. As you said previously, Claire, BB is incredibly popular here in the United States, as it, as is Israel, contrary to what most of the press says. Here are some highlights of what he said, and I'd like to discuss it after we take a look at some of the snippets of what he said yesterday. We meet today at a crossroads of history. Our world is in upheaval. In the Middle East, Iran's axis of terror confronts America, Israel, and our Arab friends. This is not a clash of civilizations. It's a clash between barbarism and civilization. It's a clash between those who glorify death and those who sanctify life. For the forces of civilization to triumph, America and Israel must stand together. Because, because when we stand together, something very simple happens. We win, they lose. And my friends, I came to assure you today of one thing. We will win. I thank President Biden for his heartfelt support for Israel. After the savage attack on October 7th, he rightly called Hamas sheer evil. He dispatched two aircraft carriers to the Middle East to deter a wider war. And he came to Israel to stand with us during our darkest hour, a visit that will never be forgotten. <laughs> President Biden and I have known each other for over 40 years. I want to thank him for half a century of friendship to Israel and for being, as he says, a proud Zionist. Actually, he says, a proud Irish-American Zionist. It was maybe one of the best speeches I've ever seen in my life. And I've written speeches and I've watched speeches in person and obviously remotely. It was fantastic. What are your takeaways from what you heard yesterday? Well, I also took note of that uh, early comment that uh, you played and, and, and that he made in his speech, and that was about this being a clash, not of civilizations, but rather of civilization versus barbarism. And I think that was a very well-made point. I think, if anything, the theme, perhaps, of his entire speech, which went almost an hour, I think, if, if that theme had to be distilled down, it would be that we, Israel and America, we face the same enemy, which is barbaric. And he singles out, rightly, the Islamic Republic of Iran's regime that is behind and backing, arming, funding, training so many of these Islamic jihadi terror groups in the Middle East that have been attacking Israel, Hamas, Hezbollah, 
the Houthis and more. He specifically, I, I actually have the uh, the speech here printed out. I was reading it because I actually had to, had to watch later as I was uh, not in front of a TV at the time. But he makes the point talking about Iran, and I think this was also very important, that he identifies the regime in Iran not the people of Iran, the regime in Iran, as the most radical and murderous enemy of the United States of America, also of Israel. But he then talked about how close Iran is to deploying a deliverable nuclear weapon. And he he said this is a weapon that could destroy Israel, obviously, but also threaten every American city, as we know that the Iranian regime has ballistic missiles. We know that because they have tested them and also because they use them to launch satellites into orbit in outer space. And that's the same ballistic missile that could also propel a nuclear weapons payload to whatever destination uh, they decide. So he says in, in his speech then about the Iran nuclear threat, he says, we're Israel. He means Israel. We're not only protecting ourselves when they stand against Israel and their proxies, we're protecting you. And then he finishes towards the end by saying, our enemies are your enemies, our fight is your fight, and our victory will be your victory. That I think is the theme of of his speech overall and, and what I take away and remember from it best. Well said.